Hello dear students, what do you see on the screen? Yes, it's a tiger and that too in the zoo. Today we are going to take up a poem named a tiger in the zoo and which shows the pathetic condition of tiger and its restlessness in the zoo. The poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with a tiger in the natural habitat, its mood and the environment it is in. So the poem is like this. He stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage, on the pads of velvet quiet, in his quiet rage. He should be lurking in the shadows, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where plump deer pass. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. But he is locked in a concrete cell, his strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. There are five stanzas to the poem, and these five stanzas describe the movements and actions of the tiger in the zoo or either in the zoo or in the natural habitat. The first stanza depicts the restlessness and the hopelessness of the tiger who is behind the bars that is within the cage and the he stalks in his vivid stripes. He means the tiger is quietly stalking. Stalk means walking in his vivid stripes. The few steps of his cage. Few steps tells gives an idea of how small and congested the cage is for the tiger. On the pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. So the tiger is quite enraged. Rage means anger. The anger is building within him because he is behind the cage. And uh, the pads, the feet of the tiger has become velvet and it's walking quietly. Velvet means soft. It cannot, because it cannot pounce, it cannot jump or run. Quiet is the word which has been repeated twice to stress on how the anger is bottled up or it is suppressed within the tiger. The poet is quite unhappy with the situation of the tiger and says that if the tiger would have been in the wild, that is in its natural habitat, it should have been lurking in the shadow, means hiding in the long grass and near the water uh, hole that means pond waiting for pouncing on a deer third stanza conveys about the poet thinking about how the tiger would have been free and at its natural best in the wild it would have been Snarling around the houses. Snarling means making those angry sounds, roaring at the houses, around the houses and bearing his white fangs. Fangs means teeth, the sharp teeth it has, bearing, showing it, so and terrorizing the villagers. But the poet says that, alas, the tiger is all locked up behind the the bars uh, that is in concrete cell. His strength is reduced to none. He is slowly and steadily walking in its limited place and ignoring the visitors because he least cares about it. Throughout the day, he paces up and down his uh, cage and at night, he hears the last sound of the patrolling cars, the cars, uh, the police patrolling 
and through its cell through its cage it looks towards the sky towards with his brilliant eyes towards the brilliant stars brilliant eyes means shining eyes with the shining stars looking uh, towards the si- shining stars and hoping for the lost freedom to be reverted back some days so the tiger wants to be free like those stars some day and hopes and looks towards the almighty to grant him freedom message in the poem is that we human beings should not be selfish and lock these wild animals in the zoo for our own goods as these animals are at their best in their wild and we can cherish these moments and watch them in their wild and we should take their freedom a selfish ends and the deeper meaning of course is that we should not control or take away somebody's freedom it can be a freedom related to creativity like teachers cannot take away the creativity of the students and direct them to write whatever they the teachers feel are is right they should be given uh, some freedom to create their own uh, thoughts